Hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and welcome back to our video. Today I'll be talking about a really big Minecraft issue which has just popped up again, and that is the Minecraft EULA. A lot of people have some strong opinions on this one, and it's kind of a big deal, so I figured I'd let you know about exactly what's going on here, because it has just popped up again. If you don't know, 1.9.3 will have certain servers blocked and unaccessible from the client, and a lot of, uh, it's a lot of servers on this particular are trying to spin this particular story from it that I really do not like. Instead, I wanted, wanted to make this video to let you know about kind of the truth of the whole situation, so instead of learning from a very biased source on one side of the issue, you could try and learn all of the information and then maybe make an opinion or at the very least just know what's going on and know why there's kind of a big war between server owners and Mojang right now. So I'm going to be talking about all of that in today's video. If you do like me diving into these sorts of issues, please do like the video and let me know because it helps out the channel a lot and lets me know you do like this sort of video. Anyway, with that said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about how this all came up because this is actually a two-year-old issue that's really just rearing its head again because it's just starting to be enforced. That's right, two years ago, Mojang started to realize that, you know, Minecraft was growing massively, and one of the side effects of Minecraft growing ma massively is that a lot of servers have kind of popped up around it. Servers used to just be a relatively small thing, like, oh yeah, we can all play Minecraft on the same thing, but over the last, you know, like, f uh, several years or so, Minecraft servers have gone from being this, like, oh yeah, we'll set up a server and then maybe people can play, to these massive businesses in their own right. In the same way there are Minecraft YouTubers that can make, you know, millions in a year, and that's kind of cool, uh, there are Minecraft servers that are making millions upon millions in a year, and again, that's a really cool thing that they've kind of taken Minecraft, they've They've extended the game, and as a result of that, they're making money. Anyway, why does this come into the whole EULA thing, and why when, did, when did, why does this come to a head two years ago? This comes to a head because basically Mojang employees were kind of uh, upset with the situation. And the reason for that is kind of, uh, you know, a big one, but it mostly comes down to the fact that they see servers as making money from their content, except it's not just making money on the side from their content, you know, they're both doing it at the same time. It's the same sort of thing, except at the same time, Mojang gets all these messages from people who play on these servers because they don't understand that they're entirely separate. And because some of these servers servers have, you know, the ability to spend thousands or tens of thousands, some parents would come to Moe and say, why did you let my kid uh, pay thousands without warning him? Why did you let my pay, uh, kid pay tens of thousands without ever asking if he was 18 plus or something like that? And they'd come to the servers and all the servers could say is, it's not our problem. And that seems like a terrible thing from their behalf. They kind of hated having to say that. So instead, what they decided to do is update their uh, user agreement, the one that you have to, you know, agree to when you buy the game and kind of have some updated uh, policies towards our uh, servers. So when the legal team got together and decided to actually draw for rules about what servers could do. The very first draft and the one they said was going to go into effect was super, super, super strong. It basically came down to if you have a Sony uh, server, you cannot charge for anything. You know, you can have like server-wide goals or you can uh, charge people for admission, but you basically can't do anything else. It was very, very heavy-handed and it basically meant that every single Minecraft server out there with very, very few exceptions were going to become, you know, like un uh, unallowed basically by this policy. They were going to breach it and this caused a big, big issue in the community uh, in including a bunch of servers just going off Mojang saying this is ridiculous and uh, this even got to Notch. This is actually one of the reasons Notch left Mojang. If you're wondering, he did leave about two years ago because this issue happened. It was nothing to do with him but because Notch is the figure of the game, he decided to leave because there was so much hatred going towards Mojang that he just decided, I'm going to sell this. This isn't my problem anymore and that's one of the reasons Minecraft decided to sell. I bring that up just to kind of let you know about the level of hatred that was coming towards this and although it was justified because again, they were basically almost attempting to shut down all the servers with this, what really happened is, you know, most servers made some subtle changes to their business style, and then when the you know, came into effect, even though a lot of servers are breaking it, if you look at the big servers, you can see they're in direct breach of the current rules, they're breaking it by the tiniest amounts, and they try to stay true to the spirit of the EULA, or at least uh, try and not be too egregiously breaking it. That's basically what the rules are right now. The EULA went into effect on, uh, I believe it was June of 2014, and every single server you know, was super terrified about it, but nothing happened. However, what did happen over the next two years, because you might be thinking, so, it's been against the rules what these servers are doing for the past two years, why is now the time this issue comes out to play? So the reason now is uh, really the time is because for the past two years, there's been uh, an email called enforcement at mojang.com and it's been messaging servers, basically requesting changes when necessary. So there are, you know, although uh, pretty much every server is breaking the rules in some level, it seems like certain servers are breaking them kind of heavily and some servers are not. The servers that are breaking them the worst and perhaps the ones that are generating the most of these emails saying, oh, my kids spent thousands, can you help, uh, you know, to Mojang? But it seems like these are the servers that are getting the messages from, again, this blank enforcement at Mojang, this unknown person. Uh, these messages are going from them, and because Microsoft bought Mojang, this kind of stepped up to another level. They're trying to really cover themselves as, le uh, you know, legally as much as they can by sending out these messages and trying to enforce it. However, they had no real way to do it for the past two years. Even though these people have been breaking their rules, which have been out there and were out there before they were even publicly at least, uh, even though these servers are out there, there's nothing they can really do. They can try and force them, but if they don't respond, what's going to happen there? And that's where this big announcement comes in. They've had no 
low powers to enforce it until 1.9.3, which uh, is the next update that's coming out, because in 1.9.3, there is a brand new file, and this new file, after you convert it into readable text, actually reveals that there is going to be a blacklist of servers in 1.9.3 that your client will not be able to connect to if you have a valid 1.9.3 uh, launcher. You have to remove this file, which basically means modifying your, you know, your game to actually do that, and if you don't modify your game, what happens when you try to connect is it will say that there's been a server connection error, kind of like if you just literally cannot connect to a server. So yeah, there's going to be, uh, I believe, 27 servers as of this update that are going to be unconnectable to if you're using a default client. And the basic idea behind this change is that basically if you break the rules, there is now some form of way of enforcing it to say, hey, you know, you've been breaking our rules, we, we're going to stop you doing this. And yeah, at first it seems really nefarious to just block off servers, but then bear in mind the other side of this, because they have been warned this is what's going to happen. Every single one of these servers has been warned they will be blacklisted at some point in the future, and every single one of them has decided it's not worth, you know, whatever it is to actually do that. And again, this, this might seem super nefarious from the server's end, because they're the ones telling the story. However, now try and think about it from the actual server owners, and if they're not trying to be super nefarious and disingenuous, because the, the servers on this list, I've spoken to at least one of them, they're very, very big servers, uh, in the most case, you know, with like thousands of players. These servers are generating a lot of money. Again, I, this is just from my experience speaking, yeah, speaking in the server community. If you have thousands of players, you're probably making tens of thousands, sometimes even hundreds of thousands per month. Big amounts of money. You might know like certain people who quit their full-time job just to go run a Minecraft server. It's a very profitable business if you run it in the way that's not you know, compliant. So basically because so many of these servers decided that, you know, if we just skirt around it, we can actually make a bit of extra money. And what are they going to do? They're not really going to be able to enforce it. That's the kind of other side to this really. Because now after this has come out, they've come out and they've said it's this big kind of big issue for the game. But in reality, what the real issue is, is they hadn't, you know, they've been breaking rules for two years, they thought they were above the rules, and now there's some actual way to enforce them. A lot of servers are trying to seem like the good guys for saying, we're gonna stick with 1.9.2, but the reality behind this is it is just a cut, you know, like a profit slash loss decision from the server's end. They've decided that they can make more money sticking with the, you know, not not uh, fixing the new rules than they could if they did go to the new ones, and even then, even now that lots of servers are blacklisted, a lot of them decided still can make more money, even with a smaller player base, if we stick to the new rules and just force players to go back to an older client because that's what some servers will actually be able to do and yeah this is kind of the result of what's going on here the reality behind it, it they you know a lot of a lot of people will try to put it out as like oh moyang's the big evil company trying to force servers to do this no the reality behind it is moyang is a big company that's trying to make servers a bit more user friendly for everyone by setting it across certain rules the rules they actually have set are super strict and ridiculous but the rules they actually seem to allow aren't quite so ridiculous as that again if you read the terms they seem really restrictive or you can really sell as cosmetic items or charge for access or you know charge for certain things like that but the reality behind it if you look at most servers is that as long as you're not being too egregious and not being too ridiculous on the pay to win kind of scale or not saying oh if you just drop a thousand dollars here you can do this then for the most part it seems like the servers are getting away with a decent amount more than the uh, you know the uh, EU lay terms which really means it comes down to listen to the Moyang uh, you know demands when it comes to really big issues don't decide that oh yeah this is better for that if I just ignore that and if you don't now Mojang actually has a way to enforce it, which really they could have had this entire time. They've just decided to start with 1.9.3. I think that's as close to unbiased as I can get on the whole thing. Uh, my honest opinion is that a lot of these servers, like I said, I think they're being disingenuous the way they're saying it. Some servers will have to go down as a result of this because some won't be able to make money off that new pitch. But you got to think of it this way. you got to think of the fact that these servers, they're, they're like businesses, really. And a lot of servers have decided that, you know, they can't be profitable under the new terms. But that's their own decision. Lots of other servers are profitable in this way and it really doesn't even come down to a user thing at that point it comes down to a you know like a, a business perspective in my opinion that lots of servers just can't make money without uh, having to break the rules and I don't think it should be allowed that some businesses can get away with that imagine I don't know I think think about a real life example this is a terrible one but imagine there's two loan companies one loan company realizes that if they threaten to break their customers legs they get more money back and as a result you know uh, you know that, that's kind of a thing they do the, the law enforcement comes and say you know you know you can't do that and they say oh yeah that's fine and then they keep on threatening their customers maybe at some point the law enforcement should shut down the business and in, in, in this case they haven't even gone that far what they've really just done is they've you know put signs outside saying they will break your legs if you go in you're not allowed to go in we're gonna stop you and I uh, that that might be a bit of a serious example that might be my point going a bit too far but you get the point here that's uh that's the Minecraft EULA uh, whole story in a nutshell they introduced it two years ago uh, they gave people lots of warning they've given people warning since with exact specific information but a lot of servers have decided not to comply and now now we're in the situation where they're complaining that oh suddenly uh, this big banner's come out of nowhere and our server might have shut down and I think it's a 
a bit of a shame. I think there could be some better ways. But if it's been two years and you haven't fixed something, maybe the issue isn't Mo Yang. Maybe it's something to do with you. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I know I'm going to offend a lot of people because, again, a lot of people have kind of heard this in one particular way. But the reality is, it is a more complex issue than that. And I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments down below. Otherwise, please do like the video if you did like it. Share if you really liked it. And subscribe if you're new around here. I make videos just like this one every single day on my channel. And if subscribed, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Uh, this video isn't paid for by any server owners or any anything, just to clarify that. Uh, I think I play on Hypix in the background, but nothing's to them, just wanted to clarify that now. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.